Hey guys, it's Joel. This is part two on a series of uh, negative emotions. Part two of two. This is the last one. Um, so if you haven't watched part one, kind of jump back because there's probably some information that's going to be helpful there. Um, that was kind of an overview of negative emotion and how we feel it. But um, this is going to be... Oh, my kitty is sitting on the grass right there. Hey, Guffin. My Guffin, you want to say hey? Oh, you're so cute. So Sorry. Um, but... What we're uh, going to do right now is go through a way that you can actually take that information from part one and use it to handle emotion um, and to help feel it and process it more effectively so that you can be healthier and um, feel better. So the first step here is that when we're feeling a bad emotion, a lot of times we just shut down. We just feel overwhelmed. We don't feel good. And we just say, oh, I feel bad. I don't feel good. We don't really take it any further. Well, I want you to identify what you're actually feeling. You know, fried isn't an emotion, don't want to adult isn't an emotion, overwhelmed, zapped, whatever. That's not an emotion. If you're feeling a negative emotion, it's going to be one of three things. It's going to be I'm angry, I'm sad, or I'm afraid. And we have hyper descriptive words that are talking about these kind of elevated fight or flight states. Frustrated means I'm a little bit angry. You know, worried means I'm a little bit afraid. Furious means I'm a whole lot angry. These are all hyper descriptive of those states. But it's going to be one of those three things, okay? Um, sometimes you get into a little bit more complexity, like disgusted means I'm so repulsed by this because I, I'm a little bit afraid and a little bit angry here. But the root is going to be one of those three things. So when you feel bad, when you're not feeling good, slow down. First step is take a deep breath and find out what you're feeling. It can be more than one thing, but there's usually one predominant feeling. That's step one. Step two is to take a deep breath and realize where you're feeling that emotion in your body. Because the goal of this is not really to just do a homework assignment or something. It's to slowly kind of rewire your brain so that we feel this stuff in the moment. So take a deep breath and try and find where you're feeling it. If I'm angry, okay, is the capillaries on the surface of my skin and around my neck and maybe my arms starting to dilate and open up so that blood comes to the surface? and I turn red and I feel hot, is that what's happening? If I'm afraid, is my posture changing? Am I hunching my back? Am I standing up straight like a meerkat? Uh, am I tensing my ankles? You know, are my ankles getting tight all of a sudden? Am I gripping the steering wheel? What's happening? Notice it, because you don't notice the stuff. And they go hand in hand with that emotion. And when you start to put them together, that this is the process, you can start to let go of these responses and have a little bit more control over your emotion because our mind and our body work together. And we feel emotion here before we feel it here. Our body starts to have that limbic response and then later our prefrontal cortex sorts it out and tells us you know, kind of what it is that um, we believe about the world and why it is that we need to handle this kind of somatic body energy. So start to feel it, you know, where, where is it? If you're uh, angry, if you're afraid, if you're sad, when I'm sad, do I feel like there's a black pit in my stomach? Do I just feel hollow? Do I feel like there's no pressure behind my eyes, they just are slack? What is it? I mean, it doesn't have to make total sense, but there is a somatic effect that you have. Notice what it is. If you're working on anger management, it's gonna help you catch anger earlier. If you're working with depression, it's gonna help you start to notice when you're starting to roll downhill and become sad. If you're working with anxiety and fear and panic, it's gonna notice, you're gonna notice beforehand, when is this happening? When do I need to start regulating? When do I need to start figuring out if I need to change my environment or change something about myself? I mean, this is, this is going to be helpful. So step two is just feel it. Don't turn it off. People want to say like, all right, I'm afraid. Okay, good. I felt it in my body. I'm done. No, nope. really notice it and don't let yourself turn it off. Notice why it's there, what's going on. So step three is to take a deep breath and make this I statement about it. Figure out why it's there. You know, I feel angry because he isn't respectful to me. Oh, wait, my boss is disrespectful to me every morning at 8 a.m., Maybe I should avoid him at that time. You kind of start to realize things about yourself and your environment. Um, or I feel afraid because I'm thinking, I'm kind of dreading going home. I think that this is a conversation that is going to happen that's going to be unpleasant, so maybe I need to think about it. Or I'm terrified that this is going to happen. Um, I'm really sad because I was expecting to be able to do this for the summer, and now I'm realizing I can't but I'm not really wanting to think about that because I think it'd be selfish. 
I mean, let yourself figure out why you're feeling these things. You have to find it in your body and experience it before your brain will really let you do that. When you're turning this stuff off, we don't complete this process. But it, our emotions aren't always fun to feel, but they're telling us something about ourselves and our environment. And we need to figure out what that is. What's going on with ourself? What's going on with our environment? If we don't do that, I mean, it's really hard to make important changes and live like an informed life. Um, we, like I said in the beginning, we want to rewire our brain to think about emotions this way because it's healthier. When we go through the day and we tell ourselves, I can't feel this, I'm overwhelmed, I'm just over it, you know, I can't let myself get angry right now because I'll explode. I can't let myself get sad right now because I'll cry. I just cannot go there right now. You, you aren't not feeling it. You're just not aware that you're feeling it. It still has control over your mind. It still has control over your body. You're still being obsessive. You're still being snippy. You're still having a lot of affective regulation and restriction. Um, you, you're, you're just not aware that that's happening. So, you know, and people will say, well, I can't do this exercise at work because I'll just lose it. I'll, I'll scream or I'll cry or something. Well, maybe some of the time, maybe that's what you need to do, but I doubt it. I mean, when we really lose it, when we're super angry, it's almost never because we, um, it's almost never because we're like being like, I'm going to mindfully be aware of the sensation of anger. Where is it in my body? What is it doing? That's when we're trying to turn it off. That's when we're not assertive or aggressive because we're not noticing it. When you're actually feeling it, a lot of the time you handle it much better. When you don't do this all day long, when you don't do this at all, and you turn all these things off, and then you go home, and they're still in your body, and they're still in your mind, and there's still that obsessive cycle, and that amygdala has cortisol moving through your bloodstream, and it's just kind of half firing all the time, but you're not sorting through it. That's what happens when you go home and you're washing dishes and then you're like, I want to cry and scream, but I'm just washing dishes. What's wrong with me? I'm just washing dishes. Why would that? It's not the dishes. It's that you haven't done this all day long and you have all that going on. And if you take time to slow down and start doing this, I promise you, you don't feel that way about the dishes as much because you knew what made you feel that way at the time. We're taking this emotion in the present moment mindfully and tying it to what's going on in our environment in the present moment and then making that connection and then using that to live an informed life. I mean, it's really, it's simple as dirt. It's not a complicated thing, but we have to do it or we have that energy and we don't have any ability to act on it or sort through it at the end of the day. Um, so if you have any questions, you have any comments, let me know. This is the part two on the emotion series. I do a ton of work with this. Uh, I think it's really effective. I think it works a whole lot faster than the kind of ABC, anger management of CBT. I think it works a whole lot quicker. Um, so if you have any questions, give me a shout out. I've got a couple worksheets I can send you or something. Uh, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Take care.